Okay. Okay. Hi. Okay. If it's Wednesday, it's Facebook Live from BeachShop.com. And look who's here. Me. Janice, you're back. Janice. I'm here this week. Hooray. Happy to be here. Happy yes. to be here with you. So and happy to have you. We had a little excitement when, when we first went on. Well, testing. you know, testing, but we always pull it yeah. together for Facebook Live because, yeah. you know, we've been beating a couple of years. Yeah. We so. know how to do this. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to a little show with me. I really appreciate it. It's great to have um, everybody here. Yeah. And so behind the camera, of course, we've got Brandwin, we've got Drea moderating today, and of course, we've got Argita from Denmark on linking um, to products and stuff on beadshop.com. So you'll see Gita as beadshop.com as well. So there we are. Yeah. All righty. Great. We're up. We're running. Um, and I just wanted to mention a couple of housekeeping things so that you guys who are new, I know a lot of you are new and are watching our broadcast. So welcome to all of you who are new. Um, all of our products and all of our projects can be found right on our website at beadshop.com. And if you go to the homepage, there's usually a picture of whatever is a recent, right. whatever is recent for Facebook Live. You just click on that takes you to a page with all of our Facebook projects and you just click on the ones that you want to see then all of the materials lists all of the information will come up about that as well as uh, this was Janice's brainchild a while back to start encapsulating the episodes in what we call episode notes and episode notes I think that people are almost yeah. Almost take the episode notes before they take the ep or before they watch the episode. Sometimes, well, if they're not watching live and they mm -hmm. come back, you know, a week later or something, because we post them the Monday after after the Wednesday broadcast. Right. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, if you go to the project page, you'll see a little link just below that pretty picture of the sample, and it says "Download Episode Notes." Yes. Uh, I think it says that. Yeah, Something it says download epi episode notes. It does. And then you can open that up. Mm -hmm. And, and f having moderated um, Facebook quite a bit, there's there are a lot of you out there, which I'm very flattered about, <laughs> who actually print them out and yes. put them into binders. Yeah. So um, And it's really, really helpful. Drea does a lot Drea's of... Drea's doing it. And she um, does a great job. The writing. And Brandwin uh, takes photos during the broadcast. Not only does yeah. she film Facebook Live, she's got the Facebook Live camera in one hand and her point and shoot in the other. Mm -hmm. It's kind of incredible. So we all do this as a big team. But I really think that the um, the episode notes are a great yeah. are a great one. You can also find a lot of projects. These a lot of these are kind of derivative of different projects that we have up on our website on beadshop.com. So if you go up on the the bar on the navigation bar on the home page at beadshop, click on projects and that is where all of the learning right. begins, right? Mm -hmm. Class handouts from when we had our brick and mortar store, um, skill builders that are just little kind of tidbits that are pulled out of projects mm -hmm. to help you kind of hone your skills and five million well, projects. Well, there's so much there that mm -hmm. just yesterday we were looking at, you know, how to wire wrap a briolette, which was in skill builders, mm -hmm. and we went to class handouts and there was a class handout on how to do decorative briolette Right, wrapping. fancy briolette. So, yeah. as you scroll down, you'll see some um, some t titles, like it'll say class handouts. Be sure you click on that and then look at all of the classic handouts. They're not even all the ones with the classes no, we taught. No, But they're the ones that we were able to, you know, archive, yeah, and, archive bring over and bring over from when we had the shop. Yeah. And there's so much information there. There is. And um, some of our really classic, I know that some of you watch, uh, were our customers back when we had our brick and mortar store and took all of, a lot mm -hmm. of our classes. So um, a lot of those are real classics, but they really um, have stood the test of time. So it's great to have everybody here. So many people are jumping on Janice and saying hello and Hi. and uh, so glad that you're here oh, and, that's so and all of this stuff. So it's great, great to have you. I wanted to call out real quick our buddy Brenda Schwader. Brenda um, has a great show on Facebook as well. You may know Brenda as her, now that's a jig. She's a wire wrangler. She's awesome. She has also put together with Bead and Button, the Bead and Button show, which you and I are going to be we at are. in like a month. A minute. We'll be, we'll be packing we'll be and, and going, minute. right? Yeah. 
So at Beat and Button, Janice and I are teaching um, a great class called Color Study, and it's one of Janice's uh, signature classes. Someone in the bead group, or the bead table, our Facebook group, said that that's like your rite of passage. Once oh. you've completed the color study, that's kind of like, <laughs> all right, that's your graduation yeah, ceremony. Everything from is there. smooth sailing yes. after that. But the handout for that class is epic. Is it's, epic. And, and when we first did it online, it and it's interesting you bring that up because mm -hmm. color study was inspired by setting the mood, yeah. which is today, yeah, which, which we're was talk setting, about. which was inspired by herringbone, herringbone, wrap, right, um, which was inspired by five stitch, yeah, Nicole and, Anderson and Brittany Ketchum, yeah, um, Rooney, and and then I did color study, color so study. they they, they grew yeah. out of and evolved. Um, out of it, yeah. just this cord and beads and stuff. Yeah, it's amazing okay. how they all kind of worked together. But well, the color study mm -hmm. was actually released. It was one of our only projects where we released it in, in parts. In parts. It was kind of like a, a bead along. So yeah. when you open the class handout, mm -hmm. you're going to go, what's this? Part <laughs> one, part two. You know, you've got, it is a yeah. rite of passion, passage. passage. You have to live through it. <laughs> right. Get get through it once. Yeah. And if you want to join us, Janice and I together, we still have room in our class at Beat and Button yes. for color study, um, which is going to be super fun. I'm teaching a soldering class uh, also the day before. I think I'm teaching on Friday soldering. Saturday. You're also doing treasure chest. Yes, I have the treasure chest bracelet. We're doing that s Saturday night. So we're going to be, our classes I'm bringing are going to be. I'm bringing the wine. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be nice and concentrated. But getting back to Brenda's contribution to Beat and Button, that Thursday night um, there is kind of a little competition with some of the instructors, kind of like Chopped, but for beads. I, and I so it's going to be really fun. And so it's, um, it's going to be a really fun event. It's myself and I think seven other instructors. And we have three hours to complete a piece. So Brenda, if you have a link, if you're still out there, and you have a link, please link it. And we'll also link it in the episode notes, and I'll link it um, on our page and stuff as well. But that's on Thursday night. Can, we'll, I, can I go yeah, Facebook you're gonna, you're gonna Live? You're going to Facebook Live, and they're going to do a big Facebook Live of oh, it. Great. But we're going to do a small Facebook Live um, as well, so you can yeah. really you can see me. Section. You can see me swear behind the scenes. It's going to be a Amazing. Um, no, it's going to be really great. Are you going to wear your apron? Of your course. Special, my, yeah, my, your metal my metalsmithing apron. And Drea just um, linked uh, to Project Embellish Challenge. So it's going to be really fun. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to be relaxed. You've got to. You're I'm my gonna, second. Yeah, absolutely. You're my wing woman. Cut two yards. <laughs> yeah, you really need, yeah. Like Janice. Hey, don't forget. Janice, give me this. <laughs> Janice, light that torch. It's going to be amazing. So it's going to be really fun. Wait, roll and that back. Light that torch. Well, I don't think yeah, so. Just, I don't do fire. Uh, well, nope, well, I don't okay. do fire, but well, I... I will Janice, sweep grab, and I grab will, the fire yeah. extinguisher. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> but it's going to be really fun, and I'm really, really honored to be included. So we're going to take you along on our bead and button odyssey. We can't wait for that. So, um, okay. So let's jump in. We have so much to cover today. Yeah. And just as a reminder, when you're watching this later, um, you can watch it on our YouTube channel, right on our website, or here on our Facebook page. You can always fast forward about 15 minutes. First 15 minutes of every broadcast is a little chit chat like you've seen today, and then we get into the meat of the project. So you can always slide yourself up about 15 minutes, and then we're ready to teach. So what we're going to do today, you guys, is we're testing out um, a couple of new camera angles. So please bear with us while we kind of rearrange things, um, and we'll do that in just a minute. But Janice, I do want you to talk a little bit. Um, about the projects okay. that came before it, and then we'll talk about your project. So maybe we want to move the camera now so we can okay. look at those pieces. Sure. What do you think sure. about that? That sounds great. So let me get our camera arm in position. Brandwin, why don't you go ahead and start with the start moving that camera? Let's see if I can do and this. And let's without. get into position. Okay. okay. You know, no time like the present to try new stuff, right? So this this particular project, mm -hmm. setting the mood, what I really like about it is uh, that everybody has Thank their you. own unique way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And we, um, 
we were we're all inspired in different ways, mm -hmm. and so we have some samples here um, uh, to show the different ways it was done. Yeah, the uh, different evolution yeah. of the piece. Yeah. There we go. So Janice, oh, you can great. kind of see okay. where we are. So the first one, because I want to show you just so that you. I don't, I'm hoping we can see this. Yeah, and um, Brandon will follow you. Okay. You just would you just, you just do your will thing. you just hold that? Yeah, down? I sure will. So we're just going to um, lay it out, and and there is this project map on the mm -hmm. project. But I just want you to kind of see this one was the original one done by Brittany, and this was called setting the, setting mood. the mood, and it was f from the mood beads. The mood beads, right? And, and the so mood tell beads. us a little bit about the mood beads, okay. Janice. Okay, so the mood beads are are um, actually very unique. They're thermosensitive. They have liquid crystals in them, and they actually. Um, do you remember like the mood ring? Yeah, I had okay. a mood ring. Okay, so I have a funny story. Here, pick I, that one about right. Okay, so, uh, so it's a. I'll I'll go quickly. So I this, know the story. The story yes. is Share when I moved story. to New York, I lived with um, somebody who was um, one of the inventors of the mood ring. That's my claim to fame of New York. Um, I love it. Yeah, but these beads were use the same uh -huh. chemistry. And what they do is they change color. So when I first got these out, these were like, see, I'm touching them and warming them up. I know, up. look at, I know. Look at, see look that? At, yeah, let me do that. So is that showing it? See yeah, how these? yeah. So these are the same bead, but they will change colors on you, depending on your hands. mood. Your hands are warmer than mine. Yeah, I think so. Um, there we go. Look how so cool they are. Look at I these love are them. now turning like purple. Like purple. I you love do them. not want to get these wet though. This right. is not for the water polo guy in your life or gal. <laughs> this is this is not. Yeah. This is. I love this but, change. But they have a really long shelf life. Yeah. These will. These don't rub off. But just mm -mm. don't get them wet. Yeah. Don't get them wet. So these are. This is what inspired Brittany. I want to just say a quick shout out to Brittany, who's. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we could. She could tune in today, but she's probably busy with that lovely little baby now, Anna, um, who we saw yesterday. She's just adorable. But this is what inspired um, Brittany to create this first one, which was mm -hmm. called Setting the Mood. Setting the Mood, it, yeah. hence the mood beads. Right. Now, it's Precursor, and I'm going to pull this one aside yeah. just real quick. I think this project has so many, uh, I want to say backbones, right? The herringbone weave yes. that you're going to show, and let's yes. get your new one in here, too. Okay. The herringbone here, this is our original herringbone wrap, right, mm -hmm. JP? Yes. And this one has the um, little gemstones, little the gemstones, pyrite, right? A uh, pyrite's life, yeah. I believe, yeah. And then it just goes right into straight herringbone. Yeah, this right? is the one Nicole did. Yeah, and this was Nicole's kind of um, the, the beginning of this evolution. Right, right. right. And you can see in this... Um, piece in this one here, you can see that Brittany used different sizes of Chinese knotting cord. So we have the smaller size here, that's probably the 0.5, and my guess is that's probably um, uh, 0.8, right? You know, I don't, th I'm not really sure. It might also mean that that she took the peridot green, laid it down it with under, the leather, and, and it's underneath. underneath. And so that's why sure, it that's got why a little thicker. bit heavier. That could be it too. And then the lighter mm -hmm. aquamarine got put in there, and, and so that's under. why there's some okay, some sure. lumps in there. And, but you could go back and forth from your CKC sizes. You right? can, and you can also do two colors. Mm -hmm. That uh, we have some samples mm -hmm. where you can use two colors together. Mm -hmm. Um, and you and can have these shorter sections. Yeah. Right. So if you really want to push the envelope of the Chinese knotting cord, I would definitely open up um, Nicole's project, which is Five Stitch mm -hmm. Herringbone, which has, it has a video, it has... Um, all the different kinds of ways you can use the Chinese mm -hmm. knotting cord. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty mm -hmm. um, intense. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not a beginner project. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really, I just, it's, it's so yeah. lovely. Now, your piece, let's take a look at yours. 
Do we just want to look at the other two real quickly? Sure, 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 so sure. So this one was by Becky Ten Eyck, and this one's called Says Who. Right, and it was also from our Setting the Mood. Also, um, it's up there. Would you hand me that piece of white paper that you've got sure. next to you? it's a little hard to see. It that. doesn't always work because it's sometimes overconfident. Let's see. Let's Let me let's see, see. Brandon. Does that, is that any better? Let's, let's take see. a look. Um, if not, we'll take it out. Yeah. This was, uh, yeah, part of, as you say, Jan, is part of setting the mood, and we call it Says Who, mm -hmm. because it has these charming little right. owls. And in this one, Becky used Ceylon instead of a tough cord. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, her in her macrame that she did. She has a heavier stitch than if she used tough cord. Mm -hmm. Her loop at the beginning is in... Um, uh, sea lawn, mm -hmm. so it's heavier than mm -hmm. if, than for instance, this one which I did, which I used um, tough number two, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted yeah, and I, I I wanted something. If you put this next mm -hmm. to this, I wanted something just a bit more, you know, sensitive. Mm -hmm. I wanted it a little more delicate, and right. and the other big difference of my sample is we use surfer cord. Which yes. is my new her love, new fave. My new love because you can wear it. It whatever you ladder, you can wear it as a necklace. Yeah, and the surfer cord. A lot of you have are loving it as much as we do. Yeah. And here is the surfer cord I've got right here. I use the lagoon, and you can see how super supple it is, yeah. right? With leather that you've used, and people have used. Usually 1.5, Janice, is that what people yeah, usually one use? 1 to 1.5. Right, yeah. so here's some 1.5 right here. Mm -hmm. And you guys can just even see the difference just, you know, right. sitting side by side. Well, right? if you're going to do this side by right. side, then you want to show the 1.5 the right. to the 1.5. Mm -hmm. It's And it's, is that what you use, JP? The 1. No, I use the 1.0. Okay. No. okay. I prefer most of my ladder work now done in in 1.0. Here's the 1.0 right here, yeah. Janice, and the 1.0 surfer cord yeah. right there too. And the nice thing, Kate, about using the one um, whether uh, using the the macrame button loop is if you're using 1.0 leather, mm -hmm. this is giving you. You know how you can sometimes wear out that button loop. Mm -hmm. This is going to protect that button mm -hmm. loop. Mm -hmm. So that's the really kind of nice thing about um, starting uh, with your loop because we're so used to starting with the button first mm -hmm. and then going to the other side right. and then forming a loop with, you know, and macrameing at the other mm -hmm. end. Like like this, right. like I did on this my right. color study. You started with started the regular with button, button loop, and then, I mean the button, mm -hmm. and then ended with a loop. Mm -hmm. This way, if you're using thinner leather or you are going to wear it a lot, by starting, whether you're doing setting the mood or any ladder project, you start with your loop, and you macrame over it. It's going to be reinforced, right. which and is really nice. It's going to wear really, really yeah. well. So that's a nice little extra touch about this project. Let's take a look at this guy right here. Which okay. one was this, JP? That's Fortune Teller Fortune by Teller. Savannah Hall. Yeah, and this is also using the mood beads. Mm -hmm. Using the mood beads and the colorway. Very different. It's really fun. Yeah. But can you see, like, the real difference between, like, this simple Bollywood stitch that she has here, the Bollywood stitch that we use with the CKC, and, you know, even just what Brittany used. Yeah, all different used size the, beads. The, yeah. So it really, we have um, a recipe mm -hmm. on the Setting the Mood page mm -hmm. that just has an outline of what you might need. Mm -hmm. So if... You want to start jumping in and designing your own. Just follow that recipe mm -hmm. and plug in what works for you. Mm -hmm. But it's a really fun mix-up, I think, of three techniques. Yeah. The laddering, traditional laddering, like we mm -hmm. have here or mm -hmm. you have here. Mm -hmm. This beaded macrame. Mm -hmm. And then um, this kind of herringbone with the beads captured in right. between. Right, right. So let's take a look at yours okay. and how you kind of okay. went forward with it. Okay. So this is a little journey, like, into my brain, okay? <laughs> um, will you hand me the tweezers? Sure. I'll use that as yep. if it's the all. Thank so you. I 
I, I cut three yards of the surfer cord mm -hmm. because I want to have a six to seven wrap bracelet. I don't want to be, I'm, I'm not a three wrapper anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I want lots of canvas right. to paint on. Right. Yeah. I, so, <laughs> yes. so three yards, so the surfer cord comes in five yards. Uh -huh. I usually cut three yards. Uh, I'll cut it, I'll wrap it, I'll double it over, mm -hmm. I'll wrap it as many times as I want, um, and then I will cut it. And so this is about you know, three yards. So we started with um, the button loop, which we're going to show you. Um, you start doing that and you have to measure that against the size of your button. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then the tough cord, we're going to take it down in macrame. And then this is just straight laddering from mm -hmm. here to here. And I decided, oh, I just feel like adding uh, one of the mood beads in. This is Can't Buy Me Love. And then I come down here. So, um, And this is a Sgt. Pepper's. So see, this is what it looks like before mm -hmm. it's been under the light. And then and then for everyone out there, you look know... Look at those age check. Yeah, got going we... On, JP. I, I love these age check and I, I also want to share that you don't have to have just matchy colors. It doesn't have to be like an all blue. I mean, I wanted to introduce these different beads, and so um, it to me it felt like it needed some yellow. So I added um, the uh, eleven dash forty four fifty six. That really pretty. I believe it's hawthorn. Um, and then we're going to show you. You know, so I do that for as long as I feel like it. I always take something off the board, wrap it around my wrist, see how, where does it come out on me. And then I decided, okay, it's time to do some herringbone. And then this is the little guy that's going to kind of cover where I ended and where I started. Um, and then I um, decided over here that I wanted. Can everyone see this? Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Then I decided I wanted to transition, put in a larger magical mystery and a couple of, I love these antique uh, silver. Um, they're, they're pony. What, Oops. What, Oops. what are these? These are. Let the, me get the table back. Um, there. Okay. It should be right. They're, the antique silver yeah, rondelles. Rondelles. Sorry, yes. you guys. We had a little bit of a camera malfunction here. You keep going, JP. Okay. I've got you. And then I said, Then you well, went crazy. Well, I didn't go crazy, but I decided, <laughs> uh, maybe I did go crazy. I don't know. I love this. But then I, I love just, it. Then I thought, you know, um, because I don't have everything in the store with me in Virginia. I only have, you know, I have a smaller bit of inventory. And I said, you know, I'd like to put something in. Can I put something into the herringbone? That makes it kind of, I don't know. Different. Kiki. How, Kiki. Yeah, like, how do you put something like that in there? And then I decided, well, wait, I have this wonderful, this teardrop chain um, that we have. And I thought, you know what, why don't we put some of, you know, this is called teardrop bobble. Why don't we put some in here? Now, the the thing about these is they come on little two, two bobble soldered rings. So you and we you, use this in one of your projects. Yeah, I use I've used this before. Yeah, too. and we showed how to cut this. Right. Up. So you're going to lose two, but mm -hmm. save them and use them for something mm -hmm. else because you could you know add them with a jump ring, and then um, we'll go kind of quickly here because we want to start mm -hmm. um, doing this. And then I took I and I believe. I've added, okay, I have added new tough cord, and the tough cord I always just cut two yards mm -hmm. at a time. I never do three or four, um, no matter what any of our videos say. <laughs> I can't handle that much cord. Yeah. I'd rather add. Yeah. So then I decided, you know, I need a break from all this little s small stuff. I thought, oh, I feel like going to the ocean. And so I said, okay, I'm going to put in some of these currents. And then I went back and I said, okay, I'm time. It's time for me to start doing this again. But I made like a mistake. I like, oh, I didn't get the same pattern. Mm -hmm. I was, oh, I said, oh no, I've got a different pattern. And then I go, oh, that's kind of great. Let's do a different pattern. So this was 
the, I don't know if you can even see it, but I had in the first one two rows of the darker, um, which is called, this one is called the 11-4519. It's, it's a on your Picasso list right brown. there. Um, it's a Picasso opaque yellow. Um, I had two when I started, but this one I forgot a row, so I only did one. Mm -hmm. And then I changed the pattern a bit in the middle. And, and it's just, like, I love this. And I think the cool thing about this particular kind of style is you could take out any section and just, like, if you loved this and were like, oh, my God, the herringbone's going to kill me, just pull just, this section yeah. out and just make a single row, yeah. right? Yeah, you don't have to... Um, yeah, don't turn this into the Spanish Inquisition, for sure. Keep it simple. Do what you feel like doing. Um, and then I I Use ended... Rainbow. Right, I ended my... Um, I ended with a macrame. I put a little bit... I, in this project, I do use zap glue, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about. And then I started another section of herringbone. Um, and if and I know someone is going to ask, well, how much herringbone, how much Chinese knotting cord do you cut? Um, and I, this one I will go a bit longer, but the ratio, I, I figured it out, every yard of Chinese knotting cord. Now, it depends on what size leather you use mm -hmm. or surfer cord. Mm -hmm. That'll make it wider or you'll get less stitches. But on average, one yard of Chinese knotting cord will give you three inches of herringbone stitches. So one, so tell me that one more time. One yard of Chinese knotting cord, one yard mm -hmm. will give you three inches. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, if you want um, six inches, then you cut two yards mm -hmm. or a little more. So one yard of CKC equals three inches of herringbone stitch. Mm -hmm. So if you cut two yards, you'll get about six inches. Mm -hmm. So I would cut maybe two and a half or three yards. Whatever feels comfortable with you, because you can always stop it, do a, a smaller section, then start something else, then do some more. Don't make, I, I really don't want you copying my pattern. Um, I want you to get the techniques and then feel the beads, feel the cord, and then say, hey, I, I don't have enough tough cord. I didn't mm -hmm. cut it long enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't worry. Start a different section. Right. And certainly use yours as a guideline. If you're, yeah. like, if you're like, I want to do Janice's bead for Oh, bead, you're welcome to copy, but I don't, I don't want you to but feel like... But don't be like, oh my God, I have to do exactly this. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Right. So okay. we're going to examine a few of the different techniques in this one because, okay. you guys, we have done these techniques a lot on Facebook Live. So Are the we main on you things, now? Are we looking at Yeah, no, at we're you? still looking at this. I'm not doing, I'm getting this prepped. You're going to talk about how to measure okay. this okay. loop. Okay, let me so do So why don't yeah. you do that? Okay. And I'm going to keep um, macrame my, like my little heart. I'm just on it. very aware, having moderated this, that people look at space for and your and little button thing is over there. Uh, my little button thing. Oh yeah, here's my little button thing. Mm -hmm. So the fir am I in the screen yeah. now? Okay. Yep, you're good. So the first thing, everyone, I want you to do is I want you to just measure the length of your button. Um, very high math. Just go in there. And that's and our Tiffany, the, the Tiffany yeah, this, flower. Yeah, right? I love this. I love it too. But whatever button you're going to mm -hmm. do, measure how long it is. Because in order to do this loop here, it, we have to make it long enough. Can everyone, let's get this. So we have to make it, this is the opening. The opening stops right there. So this is a little bit longer mm -hmm. than the distance because we have to take into account that the button has, has some, some thickness, yeah. yeah, so some depth. So mm -hmm. what you're going to do um, is you're going to macrame. You find the center of your, your cord, mm -hmm. um, and that's what Kate's doing right now. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's found the center. If this is your board. I can even show yeah. this. I can flash this right over so, here. Okay, so, so yeah, right come here. on over mm -hmm. and just let's show everyone this. Mm -hmm. So you you start with 
the center of your cord and um, you usually what I usually do is I will put this right here so I'm going or you're going from here to here mm -hmm. plus a little bit right yeah and I will I will also take it off the board I I go from here to here and then I'll go you have to actually go down to here because we're doubling it over right. yeah mm -hmm. so what you do is you double this and then when you're almost to that end then you take it off and see it if it actually mm -hmm. goes around. Mm -hmm. And do you want to just show them this stitch that you're doing yeah. real quick? Yeah, so let me show you, you guys real quick here. So you guys have seen us do this before. And Brandon, I want you to kind of show the board. If you can get go out I'm a just going to put further. this under so you have, um, you're up a little bit. Thanks. Thank you all. You so over just, just a little bit, much. just like this? Yeah. yeah. Is that better? So what we've done here is I'm using the deep dish tray, right? But you could also do this on the macrame board or mm -hmm. the macrame board if you felt like that was your jam, whatever works for you. You can um, also do it on just the velvet tray, yeah. clip it to the tray. Like Emily and then, does it that and way. And then do like this, put something underneath to mm -hmm. just lift it up. To lift it, yeah. And so, Brian, you can get in a little tighter now because I'll do the stitch. I've done a few here already, but as Janice mentioned, I cut two yards mm -hmm. of my tough cord and what I did for the tough cord on the ends was because we're going to ladder with this tough right. cord not only are, am I going to macrame the button loop but we're going to close it up and then we're going to start our laddering with it now to and this is something we want to address because we've had some questions in our B group about the tough cord and about tough cord fraying and stuff like that so we're going to talk about that in a few but for this particular tough cord, and this is tough two in yep. turquoise, I made a little self needle. Can you see how nice and stiff this is? Essentially, what I did was, and I have the remnants of it over here, I put a little zap glue in a baggie and I got the end of my tough cord and I um, just put that tough cord in. Uh, with the zap glue, kind of smushed it around like so, so it's nice and it gets nice and moistened in there. And then I pulled it out and then I let everything um, dry. Yeah, okay. and it dries quickly. Yeah, and so I have these nice kind of self needles now on the end, on the end here. And those will become important later. But for now, for the macrame, all I need to do, I'm right-handed, uh, and so I'm going to start. Uh, may I have those, uh, the tweezers, Janice, sure. so I can point something out? Yeah. Bran, you might want to get in as tight as you can here, because what I want to show is, since I've been chatting and stuff, I'm not really sure what side I stopped on when I was macrame, oh. right? So you guys can see this little scallop, where the little scallop comes around here. I know that I make my loop on that scallop edge. If I would continue to just macrame in one direction, I'd have a spiral, okay? But I want to do a flat macrame, so I want to go back and forth. So I'm going to start on this end, and so I'm going to get my my macrame, or my, my tough cord, and see how I'm making like a letter P, right? It's the shape of a P. Now I get my left hand cord, and I go over the leg of the P under that center cord and out through the loop. Okay? And you can see that the knot I tie, that knot is kind of it's sitting on this side of the cord. That knot also makes the little scallop on the other side, on the opposite side. That looks okay? so good. So now it's nice with this with the surfer cord. This yeah. is actually the first time I've used surfer cord. Yeah. Why not just use it on air for the first time? Now here's my Q. All right, my loop looks like the letter Q coming down. I get the right hand side of my cord over that leg coming off the Q, under the cord, and up through the loop. And can you see how here my knot is tied on this side? And that knot will form the loop and form that scallop. So I keep going back and forth with my P and my Q to create a full 
flat macrame knot. Mm -hmm. And I have my, I have a little bit of give in this cord, which is fine. It's buoyant, so I'm able to kind of move things around. Um, and pretty soon, I'm going to get Janice's little measure -er, yes. and we're going to measure and see how close I am. I'm just going to double it for sure, you so great. we know. And once you get into that rhythm, you guys, you know, I'm sure that you've macrame before, but once you get into the rhythm, I don't want to stop macrame is the thing. Mm -hmm. I just want to keep going. So, it's so just, is this my double? Yes, that's your double. So I'm so almost done with halfway, mm -hmm. so I'll go, I'll go to this point over here. Okay. So, um, and just so, Cindy, you know, this is still the Tough Chord 2 that Janice used mm -hmm. for her loop. And then this is the Lagoon Surfer Chord, and that's it's the 1.0. 1. 1. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's three yards. Three yards. And that com surfer chord. complete list is over on the website on, um, under Blue Lagoon is the name of this project. So, Janice, it looks like you are set up for um, some herringbone, right? Yeah, I thought... Are you ready? Yeah, I thought I would... I'm going to um, keep macrameing like my okay. little life depends on it, and you go ahead and so, pull yours a little closer. Okay. In. So, um, just like Kate has done with the tough cord, uh, there are times when you're going to want your um, surfer cord and you're going to want your Chinese knotting cord to also have um, stiffer pointed ends. And so the same thing that Kate did, you're going to put a little of your zap glue. This is... I love the zap glue for this. So you use a little baggie, you make sure you put the top on, you work in a well-ventilated room, and then I've already done these ends, but you would just take the ends, put them in, rub it up, smush it like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are saying make yeah. a little glue top. Right, and then out they come. Give them a minute to dry. These feel just right. I'm going to take now the um, Zuron shears I always uh, the the maxi shear yeah. cutter and then I'm going to make a nice a nice like angle cut and you can always go back and do this again um, I know that there's some newer products out there we've tried a couple that will do this but the zap glue is you know it's just it's fine good old zap, yeah. you know? and then I'm just going to do that with these as well And then, um, so this isn't exactly the way the project is done, but we're going to, and you can see everything now, right? Everything showing yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, okay. we're good. Okay, so I'm putting on um, a bead. It's one of the mood beads. It's Good Day Sunshine or Come Together. Mm -hmm. Not really sure because it's changed colors. <laughs> I think it's Come Together. And I'm going, just uh, suspend your realism. Pretend that this is... No, um, in the body of the piece. Yeah, it's in the body of the piece. I've, I've pulled that up there. I'm going to um, start my herringbone. Um, I want to start it right above it. And there's, you know, if you wanted to do a few stitches of not, of macrame, you can. I just, I'm just, just, no one's going to see this. So you don't have to make it necessarily super pretty. I'm just going to tie a knot in there. Let's get this. But if this I can could even also tie be, a knot. Janice, the way that, let's mm. say that you just want to do a herringbone portion yeah. of this bracelet. Right. This is just what you could do. You right. could um, macrame around this loop, have that loop come around, just tie your thread on. And start your herringbone. You don't even need to right? macrame the surfer cord. No, you could you just could have just it be use a loop. It, yeah, yeah you but could if just you wanted to it. have that macrame look, right. you could. Right. right. So I'm going to just, I want to just secure this here. Um, and then I'm going to take these ends, which I've made them a little uh, stiffer by the zap glue. Yeah, and that I'm going to bring these through. Really stiffens it. Someone yeah. just mentioned on in the comments that they use clear nail polish and the clear nail polish didn't make them quite as stiff as she needed. Right, right. Now Some this... people were asking about thread zapper lighters on this. I never, I never use a lighter. I'm so nervous. 
but I'm going to put a little bit of the zap glue right on this knot it doesn't hurt my thread and now I'm going to just push this in and on top nice yep and it's just going to sit I just have to wiggle it around until it's let me get it back down again that well that's good okay so that now I have a loop I have my bead mm -hmm. in place and you're ready to go right now all I want to do is I want to open my threads up a little and do you want a little spool of something um, I'm gonna just do it like this for just a oh, second yeah, with, with two a, of the yeah with two little clips. the clampers if you you know bless you don't Emily's have, heart yeah. and those clampers you don't have to you could if you didn't have the clampers you could certainly you just use a, a little spool in mm -hmm. here to open it up but now I have two threads right just to let you know the bottom of the tray is not visible. Okay, so let's just let's just move it up so everyone can just see okay. how it's okay. connected as well. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Um, and you I'm gonna give you this B, Kate, so that when you're done with that and we go back, we wanna make sure. I don't we forget put, to put the B put, on. Put the Thank B you. on. Okay. Thank you for the B. Yes, yeah, so if I wanted to put a charm or something on it, I would put the charm on maybe now and then put these um, Chinese knotting cord threads through the charm as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to demo how to do the, um, herring the herringbone. And, and then we'll show how to add the baubles too in, in a little bit. So, okay. Um, and I'll show you how we cut those up. Too. Okay, so everyone, this is how complicated it is. Are you watching? Are you ready? Okay. You sitting down. You take one cord, you go under and through. Then you take the other cord, you go under and through. Then all you do is you start again. You go under and through and gently pull it up. Then you go under and through. Okay, can I go home now? <laughs> All right, nice, that is, nicely that done, That is it. That's it. You always want to start on the same side. So I'm going under and through. Oh, sorry, everyone. Right. Pull it up. Under and through. Pull it up. Under and through. And if a stitch gets loose or something, you'll see it. You just start to get your rhythm, and then once you have this, the cords don't really need to be this far apart because they'll get too wide, but mm -hmm. you want to just establish yourself, and you always want to start from the same side. You always want to go, like if you were going to stop and go make a sandwich for lunch, stop at the finish so that you always know your next stitch is the right one. Mm -hmm. So under and through, pull it up, under and through, pull it up. So I'm going to pull these a little closer together so they're not so far apart. Somebody and asked if this was also the fishtail braid fishtail. I know the fishtail as the fishtail knot is... Well, it's similar like if you're braiding hair, that fishtail. It, 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 I think it's similar. Um, I'm just, I'm not a braid person. I'm sorry. Uh, but that's something that we'll look up and we'll see if it is and put it in episode notes. Um, but it could easily be because it looks very much like a fishtail. Um, we know it um, as herringbone. Mm -hmm. um, okay, everybody, that's it. So now I'm going to show you with do, a little. Do you want me to cut a few bobbles? No, for I, you? Can, I can do it. Okay. So let me get it. Because I'm just about done here, too. Okay, well, so on this chain, I'm going to let's dissect it. So you're going to lose. You're going to lose one batch. Let me get. I'm going to, you know, you can help me, Kate, once I get this going. Sure. Let's get. So here's what you get out of this is you get, because it's, it's. So you're doing them by the pair. 
I so do them by connected the, by a little loop. Yeah, because if you did it just on its own, they stick up. Mm -hmm. So it needs like a little they, joint. They need an elbow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, okay. Again, this is how complicated it is. Everybody. Here, hand me the chain. I'm okay. going to cut you a few more. Okay. I've got feathers right here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to just pick up my my um, two little teardrop baubles with my right hand cord. Then I'm going to go under. Then I'm going to pay, take my left hand cord and bring that under. And then I'm just going to take a second. The first one is a little more challenging. Then I'm just going to take it and position it. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Now you That's could it. do this. Let's say that we wanted to add any embellishments on this Anything. or little wire wrapped Anything. pieces. You could use our oval jump rings. We have a nice little four millimeter oval jump ring. Yep. That Tassels you could, would be cute. Yeah. You could go ahead and add whatever it is you wanted on those rings. Mm -hmm. But you can see like Janice's little component, it's two pieces connected with an oval. Right. You could also resurrect the pieces that you had to cut off and get an oval jump ring. Put yes. them on a smaller yes. oval jump ring and, and use, them use those. Piece. Yes, yeah, you whatever. could. You could. Um, absolutely. And then so however far you want to go till your next one and then you just add your next one. I'm just pushing this up as I go. This is how hard this is. And I'm ready to um, whatever okay. you are. Okay. So if I'm going to put my work aside, um, I don't like to leave it loose. So what I do is I get clips, and I'll show everyone. We'll, we'll show how I do this. I just do this. I clip it to the side. Can you? Can we see? Can everyone see the board? Yeah, well, here's. I am. I it, Are you able to see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've just, now my work is nice and secure. There's good tension and I can pick it up at any time and it's going to just be exactly where it was mm -hmm, where from it was. when I left it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let's, I'm going to put this aside for a minute. So now this is macrame, Janice. So what, so what am I measuring for here? You're now. measuring for, here's your button. Here's your button mm -hmm. and you want to pinch that together and you want to see if your button can go through that. And if it can't, then you have to make it bigger. It'll go through, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to... We're going to set the board up so I can map gonna, this together. Exactly, right? exactly. So how would you do that? I would take... Um, so I have some rubber bands here. Mm -hmm. Let's open this up. Can okay. I... Okay, yeah, please. Okay, so I'm going to take half of this. I'm going to find the middle. I'm going to get your little pinchy guys. Mm -hmm. Let me, I don't think we caught both of those. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now what I want you to do is clip this down here. And the nice thing about the surfer cord, we don't have to worry like we do with leather that we're, we're gonna damaging it. it or mm -hmm. It's just like indestructible. So you guys can see how we've set oh, it wait, up Oh wait, we here. forgot to put the oh, look at, do Oh, we put them on. on now, right. We put it on now okay. and then we want to macrame these together. Okay. And then put these ends through the charm. So, so let's, let's go ahead and let's add do our that. Charm. Yeah, add our charm. So I'm going to get the ends of my surfer cord here. Mm -hmm. And did you put them on both or on one? Um, that is a good question. Where's my bracelet? I might have it's just right next to you, isn't I might it? Have I just think put you put it your on board one on because it might not have fit. Yeah, it's a little. Um, let's see. The hole's a little small. Yeah. So let's see. You're asking me to think back. Um, I it did put. It, I did put it through both of them. Okay. So Can you I'm do just that? Gonna, yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and angle cut these guys. And let's get them through. Yeah. So see how... And I think what I did is I put these through first. 
Oh, smarty pants. So that, because they're Great. so tiny and I didn't, so mm -hmm. I put these through first. There we go. And then I put one through at a and time, then the second, yeah. and then the second one, and then slide it back in the opposite direction. So you guys can see, I'm really pushing, uh, pulling that tough cord down so I'm getting as much room in that hole as I can. Yep. And so there's one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do the same thing now, tension that down mm -hmm. so I have a lot of room in that hole. And we can just grab it and pull it down. Oh, so yeah. so Did close to being grabbing. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is, is that these are all handmade by Green Girl. Mm -hmm. And do this the loop, time. like if you, I've got two here where the loops are two different sizes. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to, just for demo purposes, take the one that's got the bigger loop. We could, or you know what you could also do though to Is make to fix another, this. yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm still, I still have my zap glue bag right. from earlier. I'm just rolling it around in that little glue taco. Sometimes the issue with cords like this is they like to fray, mm -hmm. you guys, right? And so we want to, and see that's almost stiffened yeah. now. Yeah. I'll come in and see where it's frayed. Nice angle, really a nice a angle. Good angle. Yeah. So now, where I was struggling before, you can see I can just go ahead, put it through. Look at that, yeah. right through. Yeah. No tears, no problem. So now, once this is all the way up, we'll go ahead and get our clampers. We'll put that up nice and tight. Make sure that's arranged mm -hmm. correctly, JP. Yep. And I don't want to twist my surfer cord, right? I want my surfer cord to lay as side by side as I can. Um, yeah, it doesn't. Right? Re it doesn't. Yeah, does it, it matter? It doesn't matter too much. I mean, yeah, you want okay. to try and straighten it out, but um, so um, so there. Let me just go back and say that there are two ways of doing this. We could have also done a few macrame stitches sure. before and then pulled it up. And we still could do. Yeah. So do you want me to close it yeah, up? Yeah, why don't you yeah. take the okay. tough cord out and then do okay. that? And then um, I don't think you're going to have... Just to bring it together. Yeah. Yeah. But oftentimes when I am having trouble with beads going through um, cords, I will put the skinniest cords, cords through, through first, first. Right. And then go back. And this mm -hmm. is a good project where you sometimes have those challenges, mm -hmm. put the thin ones through first and then go back and put your heavier cords. And it doesn't matter which side of the macrame I start, no, you doesn't. know, loop-wise. No. So I'm just going to jump in. Yep. And there we go. There yep. we have it. So now, now I'm there. go this way. And as long as you're just going back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth, so... I'm going to fall asleep with your soft voice. With my... Back all you want to do, that's right, It's just, no, you can't fall asleep, we've got to do the second I know, but I'm saying part. you're, I'm you're, so soothing. You're soothing, you really Well, are. someone just commented on the, on the stream, on the stream there, Janice, that you are such a great teacher because you're so laid back and you oh. just go with it. Oh, and I, I am? think oh, that thank you. is a real, especially, you know, when you're doing a project that's so involved like this. What you're looking at, you guys, is the big picture. Mm -hmm. You're not worried. Don't sweat the small stuff, right? Yeah. Just look at the big, big picture. So now I'm going to run the short, uh, the skinny cords through, mm -hmm. right, JP? Mm -hmm. So I do one, and I do the second one. Again, mm -hmm. kind of pushing up to expose as much hole for right. that little honeybee. Right. And then we slide that, that up. little guy up. And then, and then I just keep going, right? Yeah, I do a couple, just like you would with any laddering project, I would do a, just a few more uh, macrame stitches to establish your charm mm -hmm. where you want it before you start your first bead. And you want to make sure that that charm is sitting where you want it. It might want to travel down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So be cognizant of where it's sitting once you do like those first yeah. two or three stitches just so you're not surprised later with something being loose, right? Well, if you have a charm that has a really big hole, then you're going to know about it fairly soon. But this mm -hmm. one, 
as you know, we know that it's not really going to go right. anyplace. And I've kind of pushed it up tight yeah. against. Yeah. It's under my desk. Yeah. I can go get it. Yeah. Because Janice is going to do it. That's okay. I tried to find it. I, I could only That's find right. it. That's okay. 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 It's there. So, Janice, I'm going to hand this off to you. Okay. I'm going to get. You're going to do. I'm going to show the people, lat, a little bit of laddering. Okay. And people are also saying. People are also saying who's glad to see Janice today, and they're sending oh. you a lot of hearts. Oh, everyone, thank you so much. There it's we go. so nice to be back. Okay, JP. Um, so what's next? Okay, so we, uh, many of you out there know all about laddering, um, but we're going to just go back and remind everybody a little bit about um, the kind of laddering that started us off on this journey, which is um, the traditional, not the infinity stitch. And so I'm establishing, I've got I've got my two cords, and you, I really want to say that I think if, if you're new to laddering, start off, start off with two yards of like whatever your cord is. Um, don't try to manage four yards. It's, it's easier to add a thread in later if you need it. And so we're going to, um, the, tr the traditional way of um, laddering is taking your cord, one from each side. And I sometimes get questions from people like, oh, well, the beads pop up. What's happening? Why are my beads popping up? And so let's first, let me first show you that I started, I went through the bead this way, one from each side. Start with a small bead. Don't go right away to your largest bead. I'm bringing the bead in, and it's going to pop up because I have to bring the threads under and around. And then I just kind of shimmy that bead in, and it's sitting right there. Now, sometimes if you can, you can go back and reinforce that first bead if you need to, but usually if you just leave just a tiny little bit of air between your macrame stitch and your first bead, and also the surfer cord is going to stretch, you're not going to really have that problem. I also have, now that Kate's made these nice stiff ends on this, I have these self needles and I can just, um, I'm going now to two beads. So the second batch is two beads. And so Janice, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, and this might be the right time to do sure. it. Sure would be issues with tough cord. Okay. Um, I don't know if you need to show another step before that, and then we'll address a couple of a couple of questions that we had about the tough okay. cord. Okay. No, I'm, I'm this just... This is the right... Yeah, this is the, the right, right time. I'm just going to keep doing it, but yeah. you can see everyone out there. I've got... Um, Look at how nice that yeah, is. Yeah, and I... But I have to remember to put my threads underneath. Yeah. Because you always want to be consistent. The same way, the yes. Same way. The same way. And would you pass your piece over to me, if you would, real yeah. quick? Yeah. So our grand one's got it. So we can, um, so we can kind of compare okay. where you are on this finished piece. Okay. And then, um, then we'll, then we'll talk tough cord. Okay. So I'm now going to add one of the five millimeter rondelles. Um, yeah, and you guys can see, right here. Just along where Janice yeah. is doing that. Just so, the same. Yeah, so I I had to figure out how many of the 11 aughts I needed to be the right de the depth for the 5 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And it turns out to be 2. You could maybe, if your beads are a little different in size, like Emily always talks about, not all 11 aughts are alike. Mm -hmm. Maybe yours okay. are a little smaller. So you want to um, use like three instead of two. Mm -hmm. So then I would go to one, two, and I would add another row of three. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go from one to three. Mm -mm, because the jump is too big. Yeah, take your time. Take mm -hmm. your time. And then all this is, is then I'm going to do another two. Mm -hmm. And so you're alternating the rondelle well, and, two, and the two. Two of the 11 odds, yeah. So as we said, we are working with tough cord. Right. And there was discussion on the bead table in our bead group that 
some people have been having issues with the tough cord um, shredding. Mm -hmm. So number one, thread is thread. So no thread that you use is ever going to be bulletproof, you guys, no. right? It will show some wear and tear. It's never going to be fire line. No. Mm -hmm. and, and as much as we would love it to be indestructible, it is thread. Mm -hmm. You know, right. your jeans are going to wear out. Right. They right. just do. They, they don't last do. forever. Right. Are you looking at my jeans right now? No, I'm okay. not. I'm just I'm saying, just I'm thinking of my jeans. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. They just start to wear. Yeah. There's a few things that you can do, however, though, to mitigate some of that wear. Okay. What we use today with this traditional laddering is that Janice used glue, right? We use the zap glue to create self needle ends mm -hmm. on the ends, um, and she's laddering it with it that way. Now you could, some of you, and, and we do it too here, we ladder with um, the collapsible eye needles, sometimes with the flexible eye needles, sometimes with the big eye needles, just depending on what needle we might want to use. Um, that thread, as you bring the needle up the thread and you're laddering with it, that thread may cause, or that needle, the, head, the eye of the needle, may cause a little rupture. It right? can. You, that's what you and Emily talk about mm -hmm. with looming, mm -hmm. where you want to scrape the top of the bead and not, I mean, I'm sure everyone out there has had a situation where they've put their needle and thread through a thread, mm -hmm. especially like KO or mm -hmm. NIMO or something. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make sure that uh, if you're finding things are fraying, one of the first things that I look at is, is was the thread damaged at some point? Mm -hmm. The second thing I look at is, could I have gone to a heavier tough cord? That's I had right. one, a size one in my, uh, you know, my studio. I'm working with six millimeter stones. Could Obvi I have bumped it up? Obvious, in my opinion, you go with as heavy as you can go without it being mm -hmm. burning the thread, getting hot. Mm -hmm. But right. sometimes it's it just a good. matter of right. you are using thread that's too thin right. for the weight of the beads and that they will eventually, like anything, like holding up the Golden Gate Bridge, if those cables aren't heavy enough, they're going to eventually begin to, to wear. wear against mm -hmm. each other. And in that process, the thread can unravel. Right. It can become right. damaged. Because, right. So right. if you're not laddering tightly enough, you right. want just that right that balance right of tight and loose, mm -hmm. the right size tough cord, or you it, you could have it with you could have it happen with Ceylon as well, mm -hmm. where you're using micro Ceylon, you're using it single, or you're using KO. And the beads are rubbing against it, and mm -hmm. it can also fray. So, yes, it's possible. Um, sometimes when you're also adding a thread, um, you can have a little bit of fray, and that is going to then be a weak point. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is also with the shape of the bead holes. Yes. Between a semi-precious bead and a glass bead. Right. Glass beads, the holes are usually rounded at least with these type of like these check mm -hmm. glass rondelles mm -hmm. there's a little slope to that hole because these beads have been pressed or if they've been a lampwork style bead usually the hole is dim dimpled in a little bit sometimes if you're using semi-precious beads that hole is really angled right so it right. can be kind of a thread cutter they're also um if we were talking about it they're also stone. Right. You know, just so like at the, you, at the beach, what is sand made of? Sand is made of stone. That's where it comes from. The waves are wearing against the, the rocks, and they eventually wear out and make sand. And just like, uh, you know, your bracelet, the, the semi-precious stones um, can we'll have rub. either. They can we'll rub. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and so... You, the, the, I think the secret is going to the heaviest cord you can use that makes sense, the heaviest thread that you can use that makes sense for your beads. Mm -hmm. And would you say that, in your opinion, I, yeah. I know what my opinion is, 
the, um, maybe, uh, the Ceylon or the Tough Cord, are they about the same in strength, do you think, Janice? Or why would you choose one over the other as you're laddering with that Tough Cord? I prefer um, Tough Cord mm -hmm. because it has a natural sizing on it, mm -hmm. and it gives, it gives a stiffness Ceylon doesn't have. It mm -hmm. makes it easier um, to... to you know, ladder with it because you don't have to. It has a little bit make of resist the, yeah, to it. Yeah, it has a mm -hmm. little. Yeah, it has a little resist mm -hmm. to it. So that's that's probably um, my answer. Is that you know, I, how long have I been laddering now? I mm -hmm. can't even tell you, but I I will always. I I like to reach mm -hmm. um, for for tough cord. Now on my bracelet, I don't know if I'm in view here, you Brandon. Um, this is the color study that I did, the Art Deco color study, and I did Infinity Stitch with this one, and I did Infinity Stitch mm -hmm. with KO. And Infinity Stitch is where, and we have a lot of primers on it, you use a single, well, you double a thread over and yes. you use a needle, and you do an infinity, a figure eight stitch, back mm -hmm. and forth, back and forth. It's great for smaller beads like this. Mm -hmm. It's great to ladder with tiles, things like this. Um, so there's just, you know... We could have done an infinity stitch with what you're doing here, but not with the tough cord. Infinity is really usually done with KO. With, with thinner, right? with yeah, thinner with, or micro sealon. Yeah, micro yeah. sealon. Or and even we now have the sealon in the D. The super long, which, right, the yeah. sealon D. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it really, I, I think it comes down to experimenting, mm -hmm. to doing, like Janice is doing, you could just do a short little single wrap. And experiment yeah. with how you like the results of it. You know, you don't have to uh, commit to doing your whole piece in the same thread. But I am happy if someone has samples of where their tough cord has broken and they want to send in a quick little video file mm -hmm. of showing us the whole bracelet, telling us what size tough cord they use, what size beads. And, you know, I, the bead doctor is in. Yeah, we're we'll happy yeah. We're happy to look at what, what the issue is. Mm -hmm. I want to just show everyone how I might end this section. Mm -hmm. So, I've again, I've graduated down. I always graduate down. I'm lifting this up a little with just a spool of knotting cord. And now I'm just going from here, and I'm going straight into my macrame stitch. Mm -hmm. And I might do like a total of four. Um, if I'm going to end, um, let's say I want to end this thread. I don't want to, I want to start with something new altogether. Um, I will use just a little bit of glue. Um, if you had, um, th oh, thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. If you have your GS Hypo, um, this is a good place for that. Or you can just use... Uh, the zap glue. I'm. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you don't want really too much. A love affair with yeah, the zap you don't right want now. the the thing is you don't want too much zap glue because it's going to stiffen. It'll stiffen. It'll stiffen your bracelet. You just want just enough to let it know that it's got a job to do. It, you know, and that job is uh, hold I those, ha those hold those threads. And so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do. Did you stiffen the ends of the ends of this Chinese knotting cord that I'm hearing boning? With? Yes, I think yeah. I did. Yeah. I tried. Yeah, it really is helpful making those self needles, and the zap is really a great way to do it. Okay, so then I'm gonna just I'm just gonna finish this. And then, um, depending We're ready for on a where, bead or whatever. yeah, right? I mean, I think that um, I want to show. We could show the currents. What mm -hmm. to do with the currents? Yeah, let's, do, let's uh, that's put one kind of those of fun. on. And then I'm gonna have this. Uh, this this will be ready for you to um, to show that closure. Okay. I'll get this ready. I'm gonna put on. Just I'll put on. And the section that Janice is talking about is this section here with these recycled glass beads that we call currents. This is the one that we're gonna share now. Now Janice, you put on a big roller bead before them, but you don't have to. You don't to. have to, no. You could put a bead here to transition, or you well, could just continue I'll, with those. You know those. what, I'll put out the roller bead on. All where, right, where is you that don't guy? have to. Well, that's okay, let me, um, I'm gonna put one on. 
I love the roller beads, and I the do roller too. beads are a great size with this one millimeter um, lagoon, uh, one millimeter surfer. We used to call these in the old days pony beads. They we did. Yeah, but because I guess the the checks now call them roller beads, maybe because of the faceting. But the, in the old days, they were just the pony beads. So I'm going to mm -hmm. pull these through. Um, and and you could add, because this has a fairly, oh, where is this? This has a fairly, let's get this guy out of here. This is a fairly big size hole. So you may end up opting to glue this in place if mm -hmm. you want. Depends. You can do a few of your macrame stitches and then go, oh, it's it can move. I don't want it to move. So I know it's not really going to move because I've got some stitches there that if inform me it's mm -hmm. not really, well, it might move a little bit. But, okay, so I'm going to, let me just do a couple more stitches. I'm going to put on my currents so I, I don't have to waste time later putting, you know, un right, attaching it from the board. Sure, that makes sense. Um, but the beauty of this, everyone, is you you don't have to pre-think what you're going to do next. Just think that's, in sections, that's just, all. Yeah, yeah just yeah. like do, do a little bit, have some fun with it, um, learn from um, what you just did before. Yeah, don't sweat it. Yeah, now if I wanted, let's say I was going... Oh gosh, I don't have enough thread. Right. This would be a good place to add. I glued thread. the mm -hmm. old down. I could stop and I could just add, add a new, new thread, thread. Mm -hmm. by just tying a knot and putting it under the bead, and that's it. And I usually would put, I would put it above here. Then I would bring the threads through, right. and I would glue it so glue it was it, right. on top rather than underneath. Would you hand me a roller bead, Janice? Of any any flavor, doesn't yes. matter. Uh, here you go. So I'm going to get this set up for you as okay. if this were the end. Okay, so let's, going to just... And Janice, the wraps on your bracelet, that the Blue Lagoon, mm -hmm. the final wrap, was it six? Uh, I think it's yeah. six, yeah. Blue Moon. Six, blue moon. Not six blue or lagoon. seven. Yeah. I just didn't even want to stop, and then I thought, this is ridiculous. I have too many, it's too many wraps. Okay, so... Once you're ready to start on your original size of macrame, again, you pull up a bead. This is so complicated, right? And then all you're going to do, and it's, I love this look, the light, the, just the delicacy of the tough cord. And I'm not tying it so tight that, that it, these are just going to, like, come together. Yeah. Now, they're not going to always stay like this. Sometimes they may come together. That's okay, too. That's part of the the development and aging, the vintageness the, of yes. your design. And then there you go. And I want to remember I'm on that side because that's got the little hump. This was one of my favorite parts. I just felt like this was like I was going on a holiday. I was like, oh, the beauty of just... This, you know, I don't know. I just love these beads. I love them, too. We have them in so many flavors. Yeah. It's really appealing. But, of course, I'm green. Don't don't argue with me. I can't, I can't <laughs> change. I'm always going to be green. Well. I'm a blue-green. It's true. I really am. Okay, so I'm doing two here. And notice I didn't make that too tight. I'm not worried. It's pretty, it's kind of loose, in fact. This bead, if it were a melon bead and it had those nice ridges in it, that that's a, would you would capture them right in, and that would be really cool. But this doesn't have it. So I just let it, just let it roam. Don't worry too much about it. Okay, are you... I'm just about ready to hand this okay. off to you. I'm just kind of doing a little riff here to give you a little bit of length, so... Okay. You're gonna see how I've done this. So this would be a good place where I would probably end this cord because it's short. So I'm gonna right. just I'm glue just gonna it. put a little glue right on the thread. 
always work in a well-ventilated room. Mm -hmm. No, it looks great. And yeah, we have a whole selection of great charms from Green Girl. Um, this one we call the Sweet Honey Bee or Sweet Bee. Um, it's all in the list in our um, on our website on beadshop.com. But we have a whole array of really wonderful Green Girl. Mm -hmm. um, I saw, I'm actually going to see Cynthia. She's coming this yeah. week. And she has carved some really beautiful new things that I hope will be able to add into. You never know what that lady is going to okay. be making. Okay, so what am I doing now on yours? So I so just did this, this, Janice. Yeah. I just ended this. You had a little bit of macrame, I think, but I just oh. macrame with the CKC. Okay. okay. Okay, so if you don't mind finishing it with that. No, what am I, am I I'm finishing the, the end, uh, I'm going to do the end? Yeah. So what am I doing? Yeah. Just tell, okay, so... What you, put this is on. this is nice though Thanks. what you did here. I just here. thought I since yeah. I had it. So let's show them, let's let's show the folks at home. Yeah. Um, the button side of this. Okay. So. And so let's pretend that this was some of the laddering. So my loop is over here on this side. But Janice, the way she finished this one is she had a laddered length, but mm -hmm. you could finish it. Like if I could said, with you anything. know, I'm done mm -hmm. here. I'm done. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll add a little roller bead. Mm -hmm. I added maybe a little. Maybe I needed a little bit mm -hmm. of length. Mm -hmm. because it was just slightly short, mm -hmm. but now I'm ready to end it. Okay. And okay. see how Janice just ended it here with ladder, but you can end I it, gave you You can end it with anything. Okay, yeah. so here we are. Um, I'm going to just clamp this down so that um, they're all together like this. You're in control of your threads. Mm -hmm. You're the boss. Now I'm going to turn the board this way. And okay. I'm going to grab one more roller bead. Sorry about Okay. Forgive my reach. All right. I'm going to turn it this way, move this out of the way, and what I did is I silk wrapped the end of this. So I'm going to just um, take a piece of... And did you silk wrap it with the surfer cord? Yeah, I just used the oh, surfer you're crazy. cord. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm just going to take a length. So this is the one millimeter. We'll still Yeah, this the is one still millimeter. one millimeter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move this out of the way so it's not in the way. Um, and you could have gone on for for miles with this. Yeah. You could have also started a new section of right. herringbone mm -hmm. right here. With a different color. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to take a, a I'm going to say this is about 13, 14 mm -hmm. inches. And um, if you're looking at it from my point of view, I have a long end and then I have a loop and a short end. And the short end is on the bottom. So the long end is, for me, where I'm looking at it, it's at the top. I'm going to take this, and whatever this loop is, if is as long as you can go if you have enough to wrap around. So if I want just a little short section, I don't need this big long loop, mm -hmm. but I'm just demoing it to you. So, you so can see. And I'm, we also have a great skill builder on this. Yeah, silk wrap on how to well. silk wrap. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it across my threads. And um, if you're really worried that this is, um, you know, could like you need it to, you want to glue this down, now is a time you could put a little bit of glue. I would have probably put a tiny bit of glue back underneath these couple of stitches mm -hmm. so that this was really secure but this is this is pretty you know fail proof so I'm going to lay this down here and I'll show it to you I'm going to move my hand so you can see it so here's the loop and I'm going to show you this side the short end is on my short side mm -hmm. then I'm going to take this and I have to right now you have to trust me everyone out there I have to pinch right where I want it to start. I'm going to take the long end and I'm bringing it over the short end. Is everyone able to see that? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take my long end and I'm bringing it, let me do that again. I'm taking my long end and I'm bringing it around. And I, and I don't want you to worry about this twisting too much. It works itself out. Then I'm going to come around again. 
As soon as I get this established, I can move my hand away and you can see it a little better. So can you see that so far? So I'm going to keep going. I don't want it too long, but I want it long enough that it's going to keep the cords in place. So I'm going to do it just once more. Now what you have to do is you have to take this end and you have to bring it through your loop. Okay. If you forget to bring it through your loop, you're going to go, why didn't it work? Mm -hmm. You bring it through the loop, and then I'm going to move this hand, I'm going to, and I'm pulling this in. And as soon as I get it close, I can move this hand and then show you. And you're going to try not to twist that loop. Yeah. So then I'm going to pull this end and this end. First I'm going to get, where are your tweezers, Katie? Uh, they're my... Okay. So what we want to do is this little loop, you're going to watch it, it's going to travel into the center, and this loop is going to travel into the center. It's like watching a magic show. So I'm going to, first I'm going to push this in. Oop. Let me get this back. And I'm going to pull the, let's get this one pushed in. It's very hard to do without holding it. And then I'm going to push this one in. Oh, that looks great, Janice, though the angle is great. Yeah, so I've got to get this and this. And this is not working because you can see the loop there. That loop has to go into the center or it's not working. So you pull it I nice do. and tight, and then that's really secure. Yeah, Once you get that, that in there, you have to get it in there though. If it doesn't go Sometimes in, you have to wiggle it a little bit yeah. to just kind of, you know, tell that thread who's the boss. Yeah. Now, if you are a little anxious about this, one of the things that we taught on that, um, what was the one I did where we did this with leather and silk wraps, and we used the hypo cement. The, the two trail ride. Oh, the Bally Malo. Bally Malo, mm -hmm. um, where you can and take the GS Hypo Cement, mm -hmm. which you can use, and you can just come in here into the center of this, put your needle end in, and then squeeze a little glue in. Mm -hmm. If you want to, like, you really? know, if this is going to keep you up at night. Right, but it's it won't. If not, then you can just yeah. go in and you can just cut these ends. Yeah. Use a flush cutter. Looks great. And there was a quick question while you're finishing that up, Janice, about the difference between surfer cord and paracord. Surfer cord is a cotton, um, it's kind of like a mercenized cotton cord, and so it's been finished in the finishing process. It hasn't been waxed or anything, but it's super nice and smooth. Paracord, if I'm not mistaken, is more like rope climbing cord, right? It's a woven cord that has a core down the center, I think. Um, surfer cord doesn't have an inner core, but it is a, wound, a round woven cord um, that's hollow in the middle, but it doesn't have anything um, in that hollow core, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm going to take my button and do you have the buttons? Oh, here's a button. Here's the button. You have all the yeah. buttons. Yeah, and then the button goes on. If you're having trouble putting the button through, then you can angle cut, use the glue again, and then you bring the, you know, hold it down like Kate was showing you so that they both go through. And an, a little secret is if you can only get one of your cords through, you don't have to get both through. So you could do this just as easily if you're using like heavier leather. You could do it just with on the one on cord. On the one cord, it won't show. It won't show, and then you're going to silk wrap on this side. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then you just do knot your ends. Now, I wanted to show Janice this little transition before yeah. we finish up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just as I was experimenting. 
And I think some of you guys will enjoy this this part. Are, were you going to silk wrap now? Well, I do. do, do While well, you're doing that, okay. go ahead and okay. then I'll show it finished. So what I've got over here is I wanted to show you how to make a couple of different transitions mm -hmm. because Janice, I'm going to scoot you out okay. and scoot me sure. in a little bit more. Um, because I know that sometimes uh, it'll give you fits. What do you um, want? That? That's what I want. Okay. Um, about you know when to add cord or when to what to what to do what when to do what. And so Janice, what she had done earlier when she finished putting this little um, currents bead on, she had her um, macrame. And I thought, well, what if I wanted to add just a small smidgen of herringbone weave here, right? So what I did was, and I'm going to push this out of the way. I really wouldn't try and displace it too much after I put it. It's kind of hard to do. But I've added, um, I added some Chinese knotting cord. And so what I did was I tied a knot and I included the Chinese knotting cord and my tails of tough cord. I put some glue on and then I sent everything through this roller bead and I'm carrying the tough cord underneath the herringbone weave. Can you see this? So that I'm herringbone, 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 herringbone. So I'm doing that over the surfer cord and the tough cord. Now, if I wanted to stop and take back up with um, my tough cord, all I would do is I would get my, my glue, glue, my little zap. Mm -hmm. I was going to say my hypo, but I'm going to use the zap. Put it just a little bit on that knot. I'm going to un clamp my stuff and see how I still have it's my surfer cord and my tough. These roller beads, you guys, have such big holes that I'm able to just slide all this on, slide these skinny cords through. Like so. Yeah, they're great. And I could even get my Chinese knotting cords through, right? I could get everything through. Then, I'll bring it up, mm -hmm. come on. Then I'll bring everything up. Yeah. And there's that cover. Now I yeah. can decide, well, what do I want to use? Do I want to get rid of this Chinese knotting cord? If I do, maybe I'd macrame a few stitches over it. You know, glue it down here, macrame mm -hmm. a few stitches over it, and cut it away. Or you might just, um, you know, add something, like go in and add another mood bead and mm -hmm. glue it underneath. Glue it underneath, and then right. cut it. Yeah, and I could add, you know, more glue underneath there. Yeah. You know, whatever whatever you wanted to do. But there's, with larger hold beads, I just wanted to point out, it's pretty easy to transition. Right. And then I still have these tails that right. Jana started way up here. So it's just a little transition I wanted to share with you. So I want to show the silk wrap on the other side. Yeah, let me get okay. rid of this. So on the other side, um, I have the, most of the silk wrap done. But if you're like me, you may end up going, how do I get it close to that, to that, right, to that button? button? If you notice, it's just walking along the cord. So you can do your silk wrap up here, keep it a bit loose, then put it where you want it, and then start your pulling in. And that tightens everything up. Yep, then that tightens everything up. And they're done. Just pull it along where you want it. And then cut. I've got to get this. I have to get in more fully. It's not in. So I hate to cover my hands when I'm doing this. but it's okay. Um, there, yeah, that's better. No, I have to. This is one I would redo. But even when it's tight, you can see you can move it along to where you want it. 
sometimes if I'm having trouble also pulling that cord, yeah. I pull what it do you with do? the plier. Oh, that's a kind mm -hmm. of a clever idea. Because my hands don't want to pinch and grab like they used to. Maybe that's... So sometimes... I get my, my friend the bent chain nose. Okay, well I'm going to try one more time. Sometimes you pull it all the way through to the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it jumps. Yeah. But that, oh, nope, it's not in there yet. It's almost in there. There. Okay. Oops. Then we're going to cut this. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just tie the little knots at the end. Mm -hmm. And call it a day. And again, yeah. you could put some glue on the inside Yes, of that you could. If you felt like you needed it. Yep, you can. And then what did we do on this one? Did I, I just add, did I add some beads on I the don't end? No, I think you just knotted. No, I just did, I mm -hmm. did a Katie knot. Yeah. Which is I went through once. Go through twice. Then go through twice. And then I just pushed it up where I wanted it. And made it, it comes out to that nice little square knot. That nice little knot knot. And then I would definitely put a drop of the glue right on these tips. Because to really hold it. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. So it, so you're it doesn't, not looking, it doesn't um, you're not fray. looking at a lot of fray. Mm -hmm. And that is setting the mood. Yeah, so. It's so good. I, Here, let me give you, you can see the beginning and the end. Let me take it off of this. Yeah. That's it. Look at that. Boom. Done and done. Done and done. It's so fun. Yeah. Looks that great. rhymes. Looks great. Nicely done. Yeah. Yes. I had so much fun. It was, it's really a lovely, lovely piece. Yes. Brandwin, I think it's probably time to hand you the, yes. the camera it's back fun. because we're going to make that happen. Um, I'm going to do this. So bear with us, guys, while we change this camera angle. We hope yeah. you enjoyed the different angle today. I think it was really great it's to really have it from this feedback. perspective. Oh, good. So good. thanks for bearing with us as we move our camera and things around. So we really appreciate that. It was really fun. Now do I get to wear my bracelet? Yeah, you can put it back on. Oh. I told her that she couldn't. I know. Um, that she couldn't uh, wear it, that we had to, we had to have it. Let's see, there's one more. There should what be another, there should be another, as we were playing with all the cords and stuff, there should be another surfer cord, big oh, surfer cord. what color? Around. I don't remember. Maybe okay, it, was wait, this it wasn't one. this one. No, that's, no, that. It could be this one. Uh, no, that was from my was my it? bin. What, do you want me to go get you one? No. Well, what do you well, need? yes, I do. I want what you color? to choose two of your favorite colors for me, please, okay. Janice. Okay. I thought I pulled them off the wall, and as we were playing around, uh, the one point five. As we were playing around, I don't I don't know what happened to them. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Well, it was really. I know Janice is having trouble choosing her favorite. I can't, I can't her favorite, choose. I'm sorry. Her favorite. Perfect. Those are my two favorites. That's what I wanted. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. Great. Yes, Brandwin, you're getting a lot of camera props. Awesome. People loved it. Oh, we good. We loved having you all here. It mm -hmm. was really great. So to wrap up before we, we sign off, again, you can find all of the info right on our website, beadshop.com. Um, we will have uh, the episode notes will be posted on Monday, usually post around noon Pacific time, maybe a little bit after. Um, and then make sure that you're connected to our newsletter because we send out a reminder in the newsletter. We send out all kinds of great information in right. our bead shop newsletter. All of your information stays private, but that's our number one way to communicate with you about specials and giveaways and all kinds of cool stuff. Speaking of specials, Janice... Yes. 
since Janice is back, you know what we did today? What did we do? We did. She doesn't even everything, know. Everything. So I don't need everything. Don't. Mood 20. Mood 20. Yes. So if you place an order today, live, right now, is Wednesday, the 2nd of May. Happy birthday to my dad and my dear father-in-law. It's mm. both of their birthdays, both dads in my life. It's their birthdays. Yeah, so cool. happy birthday happy to Happy dad and dad. And to yeah. Fred, happy birthday. Um, but today, as I said, it's the 2nd of May. And this offer, Mood 20, ends tonight at midnight. Okay? And if you put Mood 20 in your coupon code box, we'll knock 20% off right. it your entire, entire order. order yes now we also have a what do we have a giveaway and that's why i had to send you over to the cord because i'm not sure what happened where it went so i'm going to have you hold kind of okay. both of those up. okay so we're giving away it's a it's a raffle okay so if you write in your order notes in the mood we're going to choose one winner to win all of Janice's favorite cords. Yes. Look at this. We've got the two tough cords that you just handed no, me. The two I'm sorry, the surfer two cord. surfer cords that you just handed me right. in the 1.5. I chose two of the 1.0 surfer so cords. And they're so close in color. Right? Isn't that interesting? What a surprise. Yeah. I chose I chose two leathers. two leathers and I know how much you love this oh, rustic yeah. brown or this distressed brown yeah. and the metallic um charcoal. The metallic charcoal. And then a few Chinese mm. knotting cords in point five. Mm. Obviously greens. Yes. Look at they all work. Right? They all all work. And everybody knows that Janice's favorite leather yeah. is five millimeter yeah. natural. So there's a meter of yeah. five millimeter natural what a flat. Great, great, great raffle selection. prize, yeah. right? So yeah. if you write in the mood and that drawing for the raffle will be good today until slightly after 1 p.m. Pacific time. It's slightly afternoon. It's about 10 after 12 Pacific time right now. So if you make that order in the order notes to us, you write in the mood. Mm -hmm. We will put you in a drawing for um, Janice's like favorite Vanna White or something. You're very Vanna. You're, you're better than Vanna. No. Well. Hi, Vanna. Yeah, if you're watching your heart, today. Vanna. If you're watching today, we learned thank a you. lot from you. Yeah, we, yes, we learned a lot. We did. Hold signs. I, you know, she knits. Really? She's a knitter. So you never know. Maybe That's she's right. watching. Yeah. So in the mood, mood twenty for twenty percent. Right. Friday, you guys, I'm going to be working with our new monthly mix. It's out, and oh, wow. Karen did an amazing job it's with really it. Really pretty. Um, it's called Sweet Pea, and it's up. It's twenty percent off today. If you want to toss it in. Um, and I'll be uh, making a cool project with that that I think you're going to love. And then next week, I'm flying solo. It's just me. One more week till Emily comes back. We miss you, Emily. But next week, I'm going to be playing with, we have some brand new beads from TiaraCast that have big holes. Beautiful new mixes that Karen and I made. One of the African traders came through, and we have three new mixes and leather. So I'm going to be sharing some knotting mm -hmm. with the leather. Mm -hmm. We're going to be making a wonderful cascading um, uh, necklace piece. So I think you guys are really going to love it. So it's large hold beads and leather next Sounds week on Facebook yummy. Live. Sounds yummy. Well, I'll be uh, moderating. I'll you be will. Back You'll in be Virginia back. moderating. Mm -hmm. um, saying hi to everybody out there. I'm chatting away. Well, you're busy working. I'm. I'm sorry. No. I'm not here. But no, but I, you're doing. The, you're doing a great yeah, job. I'm, you're here. I'm what, having a good time. That that iPad. She's really here. Yeah, all I'm really day, here. every day. Don't. <laughs> just right on my desk. Yeah, right that's here. True. It's that's true. true. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for yeah. tuning in. We had a great time. We Your piece did. Was awesome. We did. It was so so good. I'm glad you Send liked us it. those pieces. Yeah. If you do make a riff off of it, we want to see it. If you have questions, you know, the bead doctor, she's always in. She loves to hear from me. And jump over to our Facebook group, The Bead Table, and you can answer a couple questions. Join in over there because there's a lot of yeah. creativity happening there as yeah. well. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Brand one, excellent camera yes. work today. And we will see you guys on Friday for Free Tip Friday. Bye-bye.